Welcome to another edition of IP Psalm. My name is Heather Boyd and I'm coming at you from Pillar IP in Greeley, Ontario. Today my guest is Yitz Rubin and he's the business development, your business development for uh, Tar Targum Translations. Did I get that right? You got that right. After six glasses of wine, that's pretty good, Heather. <laughs> Cheers. You're located in Israel. Am I right? Correct. Originally from New York, um, work on mostly New York and East Coast clients, as well as all across the U.S., but yeah, based Perfect. in Israel. I don't know if a lot of our followers know what patent translations are, but that's what Targum Translations specializes in, um, and that's how we got to know each other through LinkedIn. So if you can tell me a little bit about your company and your position within the company, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So um, my firm has been around since 1948, actually doing translations. Um, in its current form, 20 plus years, dealing uh, primarily with legal and patent translations. Okay, so why would people hire you to do a patent translation if they've got in-house counsel, they can do it? So that's a very interesting question. What we've seen is that uh, although people speak different languages, to have someone when there's so much money on the line, when there's uh, an application, people have worked so hard to get something to a certain stage, but for someone to really understand, uh, you know, to a tra translations is not just understanding two languages. For example, if I spoke English and French and there was a medicine, I don't know anything about medicine. I know how to, how to take it. I could swallow a pill since I'm 11. But um, before that, it was a little difficult for me. Um, but it's, it's an extreme... It's it's someone who really understands who's basically a pharmacist who's a, a chemist depending on the on the technology. Um, it's someone who really understands what the inventor is getting at, as well as being an excellent communicator to transfer that into the other language so that. And understands the legal aspects. Yeah, Multiple they must things. Understand the law and the jurisdiction that they're trying to translate it to as well, right? Um, that, that has to be an integral part of that translation piece, right? So, how many yeah. different uh, countries or languages um, do you have clients in, or are you translating in? General, like you know, the general, the big three, the you know, Japan, Korea. Um, China, Japan, Korea, um, you know, Brazil, Mexico, the, the basic languages that most people are filing in is we have very, a, a very deep bench, um, for, of, of professional linguists that have extensive experience in that specific technology. Um, and I've worked for my colleague and I both worked for other firms and what we've seen is Targum is owned by a, uh, by a linguist. So they are quality focused. They don't let anything out unless it's, it's perfect. They, they are extremely, we, we've never seen such good quality and with their legal, extensive legal background where things come, need to, you know, be done same day many times, you know, like they don't give us a lot of leeway. They, besides for keeping the quality up to par, they're also ex have extremely efficient turnaround times. So we've got people in UK, um, in the US, uh, we had someone in Canada. Wait a second. Canada requires its own translation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like I'm a New Yorker. So even if I go out oh, of, I New know York, you guys require your own translation. Yeah. Just forget about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Just forget about it. Just put it in the car. I think the, the takeaway from this is that um, clients that are doing um, or, or looking at, protecting their patents in other jurisdictions. It's really important 
to um, hire a very knowledgeable patent translator to be able to um, file their patent and seek protection in a country that's non-English speaking um, for my clients, right? Um, on, from your side, you probably have clients that have other languages that are uh, have filed in India or, or wherever else in, in foreign languages. And it's important for them to translate it so that it can be protected here in North America or Canada. Uh, in particular. So um, there's a significant need in this world for people like you um, because I think that most of my clients wouldn't even understand um, that, that there's a specialty in this and that there's a requirement for this. Um, I, I, I urge all of my clients, if you have an in-house person who speaks a different language, don't get them to translate your patents. Let's go through, let's do it the right way. Let's go through a patent translator to translate your patents. Um, same thing with uh, litigation documents, international agreements, that kind of thing. Go through a, a, a certified translator um, in order to get the documents right so you don't end up in litigation at the end, right? It's yeah. a takeaway here, right? Um, I mean, I was really focusing more on the wine part, but yeah, that's also important. <laughs> oh my God, you're after my own heart. All right, so let's get to the important stuff here. Important stuff, same time what, tomorrow. What are you drinking? So I am drinking an Israeli um, wine called Gamla. It was... Uh, I wish I could read the Hebrew well. Yeah, uh, 2017, yeah. Does it, does it tell you in, on the back what the notes are or anything? But it's a Cabernet Sauvignon, so. Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's kosher, strictly kosher. Um, so Cabernet Sauvignons typically in North America have notes of blueberry. Do you ever get blueberry on that? There's... Um, potentially some vanilla notes because of the um, the wood or or oak um, presence um, that has been fermented in oak barrels. Uh, earthiness, some earthiness to it. What are you smelling on it? Because I can't bit, smell my mind. I could smell the blueberry, the earthiness, but I think I have a stuffed nose, so it could be anything. <laughs> And the power of suggestion is huge. So um, I'm drinking one of my favorite um, um, winemakers from uh, I, Columbia Valley in Washington State. And it's, do I see uh, a do I see a straw in there? You just going straight in there? I'll just drink it right out of the bottle. This is Columbia Crest um, Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't normally or typically uh, sip on a Cabernet Sauvignon. But um, the weather today in Greeley has been horrendous. We shall meet in the future, face to face, I'm hoping. Um, thank you so much for being my guest, Yitz. I really appreciate this. Um, to all my followers, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of IP Psalm. If you like what you saw here, please like, share, comment below, and uh, subscribe to our, new, our YouTube channel. Remember, we're not providing legal advice here. We're just sipping wine and talking IP.